Find the critical values in the rejection region for the following Wilcox and rank sum tests. All right, so we have four cases here that we have to look at. The first one says a left-tailed test, so D1 is shifted to the left of D2 with a 2.5% significance level, and N1 equals 7, N2 equals 8. So let's talk about the Wilcox and rank sum test procedure just in general. The first thing is, is that your uh, test statistic is based on the rank total for the different populations that you're dealing with. Remember, there are two independent populations when you're dealing with the, rank, the Wilcox and rank sum test. And you'll have the sum of the ranks for each of those independent populations. Now, it's for two populations, so there'll be a rank sum for the first population and one for the second population. These sample sizes reflect how many values were in each population. They become important because we use our test statistic as the one for the population that has the smallest sample size. So our test statistic will be T1 whenever we have N1 less than N2. So like in this example, the N1 is less than N2, so T1 ends up being our test statistic. So we're going to use T1 as our test statistic. Now, I've given you a list of the rejection regions based on the different tests that we can have. When it says D1 is shifted to the left of D2, it means that the median for D1 would have to be on the left hand side of the median for D2, which essentially means that the values would be lower, generally speaking, right? On the number line, they would be less than the values for D2, because on the right hand side are the bigger numbers on the number line, on the left hand side are the smaller numbers. So when it says D1 is shifted to the left, that's equivalent to saying something like D1 is less than D2. This might be some sloppy notation because I should probably be saying the median for the first population is less than the median for the second population. But just to give you like a, a quick visual reminder of what scenario we're talking about, when I say D1 is shifted to the left, I'm saying D1 is less than D2. That's what I mean by this notation. Here, of course, I mean that D1 is greater than D2. And here I just mean they're not equal to each other. So one is shifted to the left of the other, basically. Okay. Now, in the case of this first case, we're dealing with this scenario, right? Remember, because the n for population 1 is less than for population 2, or for sample 2, I should say, right? The n for sample 1 was smaller than the n for sample 2. That means that we're going to use t1 as our test statistic, and it tells us that the rejection region is that t1 is less than or equal to t lower. t lower is the number we're going to get from our table. We'll see that in just a moment. And what we're looking for is for t1 to be below that number, right? So if we think of this red little drawing here as the number line, we have a t upper value, a t lower value. For our particular procedure right now, the way we're looking at it, we're going to be looking to see if t1 is very small, which means, in other words, that the rank total for the first population is smaller than the rank total um, for this critical value TL, right? So if it's that small or smaller, so if it's that number or less than that number, we're going to say that we should reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so let's go figure out what TL and TU are for our test, and specifically we'll be focusing on what TL is, and that's going to be our rejection region. Okay, so let's go do it now. Okay, so we're on the Wilcoxon rank sum test table and we're looking at 0 0.025 in one tail and we're looking for n is 7 and n2 is 8. So we come down here we find the answer is 39 and 73. 39 for t lower and 73 for t upper. So 39 and 73 are our values. Okay so for our first bulleted result here we see that tl is equal to 39 and T upper is equal to 73. So remember our rejection region is going to basically be this then. We're going to have this TL region which is 39 on the number line and anything from here over is going to be our rejection region. So basically if T1 is less than or equal to 39 reject HL. So that's our rejection region. If T1 is less than or equal to 39, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so let's look at our next uh, case then. Our next scenario then is looking at the right tail test. And with our right tail test scenario, so this was our first bullet, let's look at our second bullet here. With a right tail test scenario, D1 is shifted to the right of D2 with a 5% significance level. 
and n1 equals to 10, n2 equals to 9. So let's start with the first thing, which is what's our test statistic going to be? Well, our test statistic will be, in this case, t2, because n2 is smaller than n1. So t2 is going to be our test statistic. So we can come over here and we can say this at least. We can say if t2, right, and then we'll figure out the rest in just a moment now. We're going to want to get a tl and a t upper from our table, right? for our two sample sizes. And now we're looking at a right tail test with 5% significance in the one tail. Now let's look at our uh, table that I created for us earlier. And we'll take a look at that and see what it tells us. When I look at this table, I see that for the right tail test, this is where D1 is shifted to the right of D2, so D1 is greater than D2, we have the following rule. It says basically that T1 is greater than or equal to T upper. And you see why this is the case, right? Because T1 is the rank total for uh, you know, uh, population one, so distribution one. And of course, if that, it, if that rank total is supposed to be large, then it should have a large rank total, right? Or if this, sorry, if this population is supposed to be larger than D2, then it should have the larger rank total. So if it's, that rank total is significantly large, in other words, larger than the upper critical value, we'll consider that to mean we should reject the null hypothesis, right? And same thing here, right? Of course, D2 is also small, right? And that would mean, so in other words, this is saying this is smaller than this one, so that would mean if D2's total is significantly small, below a certain value, we'll reject the null hypothesis, right? Okay, so that's the idea behind the test. Now, looking at the fact that our test statistic is going to be T2, our result here is going to be if T2 is less than the T lower value, right? So we can say over here, if T2 now is less than or equal to whatever our t lower value turns out to be, right? That's going to be our answer for when we reject HO, right? So we'll reject HO if T2 turns out to be significantly smaller than TL or equal to it, right? So there it is. That's what we have to do. We have to go to our table now, get TL, TU, and we're, in order to do that, we're going to be doing it based on the fact that we have sample sizes 9 and 10, right? and 5% in a one tail test. All right, so let's go look at that right now and see what we get. Okay, so now we're looking on the Wilcoxon rank sum table at the 0.05 one tailed location. We wanna look up N is 10, N1 is 10, and N2 is nine. So we come down here, we find the answers for TL 69, for T upper 111. So 69, 111. Okay, so our values become 69 and 111 for TL and TU respectively. Now, looking at our test statistic, remember our test statistic because the N2 is a smaller sample size, we're going to use T2 as our test statistic. And remember we're saying if T2 ends up being less than the lower value 69 in this case, TL. So if T2 is less than or equal to the lower value, TL, which is 69 here in this case, we're going to reject HO. So again, if I draw the rejection region, again, on a number line here, it's going to look like there's a number here, 69, at the bottom, right? And we're going to say we reject if we end up in this area. This is our T lower value, and we're looking for T2 to end up in this rejection area. So if T2 is over here, reject, right? Just like if T1 up here was in that area, we would reject. Okay, that's our second bullet. Now let's talk about the third case here. It says a two-tailed test with 10% significance, and we have N1 equals 9, N2 equals 8. So our test statistic will be T2. We're going to get our, our T L and T upper value, right, from our table. And we're going to be looking at, in this case, a two-tailed scenario. So for the two-tailed test, you look at our table here, our logic is this. We're going to say that if our test statistic is less than or equal to T lower or our test statistic is greater than or equal to T upper. Now that test statistic T is going to basically be the T2 value for this problem because our sample size is smaller for the second sample. So because this one's smaller, this T value will be T2. All right, but again, if, so basically, if that number is smaller than our critical value or larger than our upper critical value, 
we will say that we should reject the null hypothesis. So we're looking for the ring total for, in this case, T2 to either be significantly small or significantly large. In other words, smaller than this critical value or bigger than this critical value, and we will reject the null hypothesis. So that's the rejection region. All right, so let's go to our table now, and let's try to find our uh, T lower and T upper values so we can place them here, and then we'll fill in the rest of this. In fact, before we even go there, let's go ahead and fill it in so we know what it's going to be, right? If we did our drawing, we know that essentially our rejection region now is two-sided, right? It's going to be T upper and T lower. And we're basically going to say that we will reject if we end up in here and reject if we end up in here, right? And of course, the specific numbers we'll get from the table to know where those rejection regions begin. And so basically, if T is less than or equal to the number we get for T lower, or T is greater than or equal to the number we get for T upper, we're going to say that we should reject HO. So let's go get this T lower and T upper value so we can fill in the rest of this part. All right, so remember we're going to the table looking at 10% in two tails, with N1 being nine, N2 being eight. Okay, so we're on the Wilcoxon rank sum table. We're looking at 0 0.10 in two tails, 0 0.10 in two tails for n is 9 and n2 is 8. So n1 is 9, n2 is 8, and we find the answers 54 and 90, 54 and 90. Okay, so we found our critical values to be 54 and 90. So that means that this lower region starts at 54, and this upper one begins at 90. So if our T value is less than 54 or equal to 54, we'll reject, or if it's bigger than 90 or equal to 90, we'll reject HO. Okay, so our next part of the problem, the last bullet that we have is here, and we're looking for a two-tailed test again with 5% significance this time, instead of 10, we lose 5% significance, and n is equal to five, n1 is equal to five, n2 is equal to five. Now, in this case, we can use either rank total we want, so it doesn't matter which one we use. We can use T1 or T2 as our test statistic value, so it doesn't matter which one we use here. We can use either one. Now, in our case, um, again, we'll still need to know what TL is and T upper is, right? And we're gonna get that from our table. We'll know that it's a two-tailed test, so we'll have two rejection regions. And as before, you know, it'll be the T lower value here, the T upper value here. If we're equal to that or greater, we're gonna reject. If we're equal to this one or less than, we'll reject. And again, since either rank total will do, we can use the rank total for, you know, T1 or T2 here because the sample sizes are equal. And then finally, you know, we're going to reject again if t is less than or equal to whatever number we get from the table, or if the t we choose is greater than or equal to the number. In that case, we will reject h o. All right, so let's go figure out what these critical values are, the specific numerical values. For the scenario where both sample sizes are five, and we have a five-tailed, or five percent, sorry, two-tailed test. Okay, so we're on the Wilcox and Ring sum table. We're looking for 0.05 in two tails, and we're looking at n equals five for n1 and n equals five for n2, and we get the values 18 and 37 for TL and TU, 18 and 37. Okay, so we found our critical values to be 18 and 37. So T lower is the 18, of course, and T upper is 37, right? And so that means if t is less than or equal to 18, or if t is greater than or equal to 37, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And remember that in this problem, the t could be either the t1 value or the t2 value since the sample sizes are the same. 